how's it going and welcome back to another video a few things have changed around here I redid my intro let me know what you guys think about that and also I re redid my audio so let me know down in the comments how it sounds anyways on to the video that has been a hotly anticipated video I said I was gonna do this one back when the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 came out and I finally got around to it and that video is the Rokinon 12mm f2 versus the Sigma 16 f1.4 with astrophotography. Now the reason it took me so long to actually go out and make this video is because it takes a lot of factors lining up right to go and shoot astrophotography. The moon has got to be gone, the weather's got to be good, the humidity has to be right, the time of year for the Milky Way to be out has to be right, and most of those things lined up so I went out and did some shooting. Now it isn't the right time of year to catch the center of the Milky Way, so don't expect some remarkable huge streak in the sky. It's, uh, they're pretty much just pictures of stars, but I think I got enough information about how these two lenses perform and how they compare head to head when it comes to shooting the stars. Okay, let's start off with some of the basics. Both of these lenses are for APS-C size sensors only, so neither of them work that well on full frame cameras. Also, this is a 12 millimeter lens, so you've got a ultra wide field of view and this is a 16 millimeter lens, which gives you just about a normal wide angle field of view. Ultra wide, normal wide, on an APS-C sensor. Another thing is that the Rokinon is an F2. The Sigma is an F1.4, and I believe there is exactly one stop of light between those two values there. So the Sigma theoretically will capture twice as much light as the Rokinon for the same exposure value. Now there's something you have to keep in mind when shooting the stars, is that they're all moving. You have to take motion blur into account when you're selecting a focal length. Now there's a pretty standard rule of thumb about exposure on full frame cameras and full frame lenses, and that is you take 500 divided by the focal length, and you'll get a value in seconds as to how long you can expose for. So let's pretend that this is on a full frame camera. We'll take 500 millimeters divided by 12 that gives us 41 seconds that we can expose if this was on a full frame camera but it's on APS-C so we're going to have to take the crop factor into consideration so we'll multiply that times 0.66 and we have got 27 seconds that we can expose for this without getting noticeable motion blur but for the 16 millimeter lens we can only expose for 20 seconds so while there's not quite double the difference between the two you can expose for longer with the 12 millimeter without noticing that motion blur that much. So now that all the technical details are out of the way, let's take a look at the pictures I got and see how they turned out. So right off the bat, let's see what the brightness difference is between these two lenses at these two different maximum apertures. If you look up in the left hand corner, you can see the exposure values. Um, you can't see the aperture or the um, make and model of the Rokinon because it's not a powered lens, but you can on the Sigma. Both of these were shot wide open with the exact same exposure and the exact same ISO. As you can see, there's a pretty huge difference between the amount of light that they let in, and this also gives you a pretty good field of view comparison. Uh, if you can see right up here, this is Orion's belt, and it's almost right at the edge of the frame, whereas this here is much closer to the middle of the frame, um, gives you a little bit more field of view that you can see more of what's going on around you. So if you want to get the same field of view with the 16 millimeter as you have with the 12 millimeter, you're going to have to do some panorama and that can be kind of touchy sometimes when it comes to astrophotography. As far as the manual focusing goes, the Rokinon was a little easier to manage and recompose and move the camera around. It takes a lot more effort to turn this than it does the Sigma. The Sigma here, you can pretty much roll back and forth with the tip of your finger, whereas the Rokinon, it takes some serious doing to get it to move at all. I did notice that whenever I touched the camera with the Sigma on it, I had to double check focus and make sure that I was spot on because more than likely, I had just barely touched this electronic focus ring and knocked it out of focus. The Rokinon was pretty much set and forget. I did check it frequently, but rarely did it ever move from infinity. So after playing around with the exposure a little bit, I did find out that the Sigma worked best at about 13 to 15 seconds without having too many, too much smearing in the stars. The Rokinon was pretty comfortable at about 20 seconds and I didn't like going up any further than that. These are the same pictures at those different values. 
The Rokinon is still darker even though I could expose for an extra 7 seconds. So I think I would need to be closer to 26 seconds to get the same exposure value because of the extra stop of light. Image quality between the two is pretty close in the center. Both of them have render stars very nicely, very sharply. I slightly missed focused with the Rokinon here, but the Sigma is about as good as you're going to get. One thing that I did notice is that when you get up to the corners here in the Sigma, you do have a little, you get kind of a ninja star look up in the corners on the Sigma, as well as on the edges. If you look over here on the edge, you have ninja stars pretty much all the way around the edge of the frame. You get similar ninja starring on the absolute extreme edges of the Rokinon, but further in you get this kind of cone shaped star. And then once you get closer to the center of the image, they turn back to nice little circles. So historically, I have used the Rokinon time and time again for astrophotography pictures, and it has never let me down. It's very fast for a 12 millimeter lens. It's super wide, so it gives you a great field of view. But there is one glaring problem with this lens and astrophotography, and that is the vignetting. The vignetting, the vignetting can really take away a lot from the pictures that it takes. So here's kind of an example of the vignetting that I'm talking about. You see how totally dark these corners are, and it can really be difficult to change the exposure and different values and, and, and keep a good usable picture because of how dark the corners are. Let me just play with it a little bit here and show you guys how tough it is to bring up those corners. The brighter you make the image, the more you see how much of a difference between the edges and the center there is. Profile corrections helps a decent amount, but it's still something that you have to put up with and tr when you're trying to recover these images. Another thing that the vignetting does is it makes it very difficult to stitch pictures. So take a look at this. This is a panorama with the Rokinon. Uh, it's not cropped, so it's, it's a weird shape. You can see that there are bands across the image here where it was stitched. So you can see the vignetting coming out in the panoramas and it's really unpleasant and very difficult to get rid of after you've stitched it together. The Sigma on the other hand, I did the exact same panorama shots and there is almost no banding at all. There may be a little shadow here or there, but in general, it did a incredible job of stitching these pictures together without any artifacts of it actually being a panorama. So that's very, very impressive with stitching images into a panorama with astrophotography. My favorite between these two lenses for astrophotography, it's really, this one here is great for just single shots. It's, it's super bright, it's super wide, it's all manual. It's, it's very good for astrophotography. I've been very happy with this lens. The Sigma, on the other hand, uh, the, the electronic focus ring can really be a pain in the butt because you have to refocus every single shot because it tends to move at just the lightest of touches. But you do get full EXIF data with this lens, which is nice so you know what your exposure was. The Rokinon, all manual, dumb lens, no exposure values except for what the camera knows. The vignetting is almost non-existent on the Sigma, which is fantastic for stitching panoramas, which you could definitely capture a wider shot with a panorama than you could with a fixed 12 millimeter. So you could get just as wide or wider than 12 with the 16. The 16 millimeter is also going to be more of a general everyday use kind of lens. So you will find a lot more shots every day at 16 millimeters than you will at 12 millimeters. So this lens may be the better value in general. Speaking of value, the Sigma goes for about $450 and the Rokinon fluctuates between $300 and $400, so there can be anywhere between $50 and $150 worth of difference between these two lenses. At a $50 margin, I'd have to say go with the Sigma. You're going to get so much more use out of that lens than you will the Rokinon. But if every dollar matters, the Rokinon is a fantastic lens and it does great with astrophotography. You're going to be happy with it. So when it comes to these two lenses, I'm really kind of torn. Both of them are great. Both of them take great images. You're not going to be unhappy with either one, but pick whichever one fits your use case the best. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this answered your questions. If you have any more questions about it, leave a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer that. And thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.